Welcome to SharePoint 2013 Workflow, Installation and Configuration. My name is Sam Larco. I'm a software engineer for Applied Information Sciences. AIS is headquartered in Western Virginia with offices in Dayton, Raleigh, Columbia, Austin, and San Antonio. I've been working with SharePoint for nearly seven years, primarily as a developer. The agenda for this presentation will start with a quick overview of my demo environment. Then I'll share some pre-installation steps that I've performed. Finally, we'll go into the installation and configuration demo. I use this environment for all my SharePoint 2013 work. I have two VMs set up. The first is domain controller and DNS server. The other server that I'll refer to as my SharePoint server hosts SQL Server 2012, Visual Studio, SharePoint Designer, and will be where we install Workflow Manager. You need to run at least two VMs because Workflow Manager is not supported on a domain controller. However, it will install on a DC, but I'm trying to follow the Microsoft guidelines as much as possible. Some of the necessary steps that I've already performed include creating a service account for Workflow, which I've called WAW service. I've granted it local admin and SQL sysadmin rights. I'm now logged into the system as this account. Once we're done with this configuration, we'll test the process using SharePoint Designer Workflow. We're now on my SharePoint server. We're going to go ahead and get started with the installation. To install Workflow Manager, run the Web Platform Installer and search for Workflow. Make sure not to install the beta as Workflow Manager 1.0 has RTM'd. Workflow Manager tools for Visual Studio 2012 and Workflow Client 1.0 are already installed because I have installed the Office tools for Visual Studio. After adding Workflow Manager 1.0 and clicking Install, we're prompted with the prerequisites. After accepting and declining updates, I may handle all my updates myself, the download and install will start. It'll take about three to five minutes. We'll come back after it's finished. We're now at the configuration wizard after a successful install. There are three options available. Join an existing farm, configure with custom settings, and configure with default settings. For the purpose of this demo, we'll use the default. We now have a new farm configuration screen. It recognizes my SQL instance. The service account is WAW service. However, it requires the full domain in the user ID, so I'll add the .local to the end of it. I'm also going to allow workflow over HTTP. Finally, the certificate generation key is similar to the passphrase in SharePoint. It's used for adding additional servers to the farm. The next screen summarizes our settings, and you have the option to get the PowerShell commands that will be run for this configuration. Now we'll run the configuration. This process takes about three to five minutes also. We'll come back after this is finished. As you can see, everything completed successfully. We're now configured the farm, but we still need to associate SharePoint with it. The first thing we'll need to do is determine the workflow port number to be used when we configure the association. Open IIS. Under sites, there's now workflow management site. Open the bindings, and since we're, we've allowed workflow over HTTP, we'll need the HTTP binding port, which is 12.291. Now open SharePoint Management Shell as administrator. We'll need to run the following command. Register SP Workflow Service. It needs a SharePoint Site Collection. And for the purposes of this demo, I'm using SP2013. The wo workflow host URI will be at the server name, so SP2013. 
with the port number 12291 and we need to allow OAuth over HTTP. This will take a few minutes and will successfully complete without any messages. We'll be back after it finishes. As you can see, it's completed, so let's make sure it actually worked. Let's open SharePoint Designer. In SharePoint Designer, let's create a workflow on the root sites document library. We'll call it WF Test. In the platform type, you'll notice that SharePoint 2013 workflow is the default value. That's one good sign that it worked. If that's not there, there were problems with the configuration. It'll take a couple minutes for all the resources to cache. There have been a lot of additions to SharePoint Designer workflows as well. If you want to look, read my blog post that's on our blog.applied.is.com site, uh, please do. It'll outline some of those changes. Now that it's loaded, in stage one, we'll add a log to history list action. We'll update the message with some dynamic data. WF worked for, and we'll grab the modified by. and use the display name on okay that'll be a good test in the transition stage you have to add a go to stage event and for this we'll just end the workflow Under workflow settings, let's just go ahead and turn on all the start options. And we'll publish. After it publishes, we'll switch the logged in account to a test user I've created. The reason for this is that the service account doesn't have the content access and the farm admin cannot initiate workflows. You'll get an error message whenever you try to run a workflow as the farm account. So we'll switch over to my test user who is called Sam Larko. I'm already logged into the site. So we'll go ahead into documents and we'll add a new document. And I have a test doc. We'll go ahead and upload. Click OK. Now you can go and look at the workflow settings for this item. And we see that started. Let's go ahead and click on that. And it hasn't started processing quite yet, but there we go. As you can see on a refresh, we now have our description in our workflow history item. Now that we know the workflow is configured properly, this concludes the presentation. Thank you for viewing.